Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tina Oguz and I'm an assistant professor of economics at Lenore Rhine University. In this presentation, I will be discussing how the COVID-19 crisis has affected the US economy and how policymakers have responded to the economic downturn caused by the crisis. My goal is to help you understand some of the actions taken by the central bank and the government and how those actions impact the overall economic landscape in our country. This crisis has affected nearly every aspect of our personal and professional lives. And it has had overwhelming effects on us as we struggle to understand a flood of information on a daily basis. Previous weeks have covered some of the health, biological and communications aspects of the crisis. And this week, we will be looking into effects of the pandemic has had on the economy. This is important because although national economic issues may seem detached from our everyday lives, these issues affect each of us directly and indirectly and will continue to do so in the future. So learning about economic perspectives can help us to make better professional and financial decisions. Therefore, my goal in this presentation is to help you to develop your basic economic literacy by becoming familiar with the language economists use to analyze economic problems, including problems caused by the current COVID-19 crisis. This knowledge will help us to achieve our learning objectives for the course as well, which are to understand and analyze how the COVID-19 crisis has affected the US economy and what solutions are being put in place to address these problems. Onset of the COVID-19 crisis in the United States resulted in rapid changes in our everyday lives. These changes were driven by the uh, need to slow the spread of the virus enough to control infection rates in the population and to protect the healthcare system. When it became clear that the virus was spreading, many states put stay-at-home measures in place, businesses shut down temporarily, and unemployment rates spiked. Because of these events, there was also a significant shift in consumer spending and a sudden and massive decrease in the output of goods and services. All of these events have caused sharp changes in economic indicators. Although the individuals and households are responding to the crisis independently, how the economy as a whole is responding to the crisis is not unfamiliar to the economists. The field of macroeconomics actually studies the economy as a whole, and it provides tools and models for assessing an economy's health. With this information, economists can recommend a variety of methods to overcome sudden shifts in the economy, regardless of what factors are driving those shifts. These are three macroeconomic indicators used to assess the overall health of an economy, GDP, unemployment rate, and inflation rate. Gross domestic product, or in short GDP, is a closely watched measure of economic health and allows us to measure the size of an economy. Economists track GDP because it provides valuable insight about how much is being produced, spent, and earned in an economy. Unemployment rate measures the percentage of people who are looking, who are actively looking for a job but cannot find one. Lower unemployment rate is usually associated with healthy economy and productivity since it in indicates higher potential earnings, therefore spending for workers. Inflation rate measures the changes in average price levels of a basket of goods and services in economy. And it is also closely tracked by economists since it impacts overall purchasing power. In the slides ahead, 
we will examine these key macroeconomic indicators to assess our economy's health and explore how each of these indicators are impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. GDP, as I mentioned before, is a key measure of economic activity. It gives information about the size of the economy and represents the total value of all final goods and services produced in a country during a period of time. The GDP of the United States is reported on a quarterly basis by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. Again, GDP is one of the most closely watched macroeconomic indicators because economists use GDP to determine whether, on, whether an economy is growing or experiencing a recession. There are different ways uh, to calculate the GDP of a country. In this presentation, I will be focusing on the expenditure approach. In this approach, GDP is calculated by adding consumer spending, investment spending, government spending, and net exports. Consumer spending refers to households and their purchases on goods and services, such as food, clothing, doctor visits, cell phones, and haircuts. In the United States, the consumption category represents the single largest factor of spending, constituting 70% of the entire GDP. Business investment refers to spending on capital goods such as machinery and equipment that increase economic productive capacity, including computers, airplanes, and office furniture. In addition, when a household buys a new house, we also count that in the investment spending as the residential investment. Government spending refers to spending on goods and services by federal, state, and local governments, including teacher salaries, infrastructure spending, and defense spending. And finally, to calculate the net exports for the GDP, economists add all the goods and services that are exported to other countries and subtract all the goods and services that are imported from other countries. In the United States, um, net exports are in general negative since the US imports more than it exports. Now let's take a look at, uh, let's, let's take a closer look at each of these components. Again, economists pay close attention to consumer spending and consumer confidence, since this spending constitutes almost 70% of the GDP. If consumers are confident in their future earnings, their confidence will impact their economic decisions, including their spending activity. Due to containment measures after the COVID-19 outbreak, and uncertainty in the future incomes, consumer spending fell as much as 13.6% in April and 6.9% in March. While retail, um, travel, and restaurant industries suffered the most decline in consumer spending, general merchandise and grocery spending increased, uh, increased significantly. Similar to uh, consumer confidence, uh, we also pay close attention to how businesses are spending money on capital investment, investments, since this represents how confident businesses are about potential profits in the upcoming years. Business fixed investment was showing signs of slowdown in 2019, and this trend is expected to continue due to uncertainty about the possibility of a second outbreak and poor expectations of future profitability. Although uh, there have been 
There have been efforts to cut government spending over the past 10 years. As you can see, government spending has been gradually increasing and it is expected to further increase due to the policies adopted to fix pandemic related problems. And finally, net exports have been increasing, suggesting that imports have fallen more than exports. This could be due to lower demand at the global level and the disruption of global supply chains. So due to the rapid decline in consumer spending and business investment, the GDP in the United States has declined at an annual rate of 4.8% in the first quarter of 2020. This was the steepest negative GDP growth since the worst quarterly contraction in 2008, when the United States experienced a deep recession. Many economists are expecting an even larger decline in the GDP in the second quarter of 2020, since the second quarter will capture the impact of the economic shutdown more fully. Now let's switch our attention to another macroeconomic indicator, the unemployment rate. The Bureau of Labor Statistics conducts monthly surveys of a nationally representative sample of the working age population and determines who is employed, unemployed, and not in the labor force. BLS categorizes individuals who have a job as employed if they report at least one hour of paid work during the past four weeks. Additionally, People who have a job but are temporarily absent from their jobs are also considered employed, whether they are paid during that time or not. Individuals who didn't work during the past four weeks but report that they actively looked for a job are considered unemployed. Notice that to be unemployed you must have been actively looking for a job. If not, you will be considered as not in the labor force and will be categorized as a discouraged worker. To calculate the unemployment rate, the number of unemployed people is divided by the number of people in the labor force, which consists of all employed and unemployed people. Economists weave the discouraged worker category with caution, especially during the pandemic, because some people might want to look for a job, but are hesitant to do so, meaning that um, those who should be counted as unemployed are not properly categorized as being in the labor force. This could result in an artificially lower unemployment rate. Before the pandemic, the unemployment rate in the United States was as low as 3.5%, which is considered the nature rate of unemployment. After the pandemic, tens of millions of people were out of work, and the unemployment rate increased as much as 14.7% uh, in April. As the states started to reopen and some businesses resumed their operations, the unemployment rate fell to 13.3% in May. However, this rate is still higher than the highest unemployment rate during the 2008 recession, around 10%. The final um, macroeconomic indicator uh, the inflation rate is usually uh, calculated using the consumer price index, which is a measure of change over time in prices paid by an urban family of four for a market basket of consumer goods and services. Higher inflation rates reduce the amount of goods and services we will be able to purchase with our earnings over time. Therefore, stable prices in the economy is desirable. 
higher inflation doesn't just reduce the purchasing power of consumers, it also makes it difficult for businesses to estimate their future costs and creates additional uncertainty in the economy. Annual inflation rate in the United States declined to 0.3% in April, down from 1.5% in March. This decline in the inflation rate is mainly due to a reduction in demand for some industries, including clothing and transportation. When we put all this information together, we can see that after the onset of COVID-19, the GDP took a negative turn. The unemployment rate spiked and the inflation rate um, somewhat decreased. A group of leading economists recently announced that the COVID-19 recession likely began in February of this 2020, uh, February, of, February of this year. Recessions are usually short-term phenomena lasting on average less than a year. However, depending on the cause of the recession, the severity and duration of a recession can change. Uh, recovery in, in, in an economic system is not only income-driven, but also behavioral. Consumer confidence and business confidence are both important factors in recovery. And the intersections between consumer and business behaviors contribute to how a recession unfolds. Uh, without confidence, consumers are likely to spend less. And when consumers spend less, businesses are more cautious about the future further reducing their willingness to hire more people, which in turn reduces consumer confidence and spending. This creates a spiral effect that in, in, intensifies the effects of a recession. Uh, to counteract this and avoid a longer and persistent recession, policymakers have two broad uh, policy tools to get the economy back on track. Uh, these are fiscal policy and monetary policy. Fiscal policy refers to the government's use of government spending and tax policies to stabilize the economy. The president and the Congress oversee the fiscal policy. Monetary policy uh, refers to the Federal Reserve's actions to change the interest rates to keep the economy and financial markets running smoothly. With the onset of the COVID-19 crisis, both the Federal Reserve and the government immediately initiated their policy tools to reduce the economic impact of the pandemic-related rela shutdowns. The purpose of the fiscal policy efforts is to increase government spending in order to reduce fluctuations in all three macroeconomic indicators. The goal is to make up for the loss in consumer and business spending. Government spending boosts the GDP directly while also creating ripple effects. Uh, increasing people's income will boost their spending, which in turn increases the income of others, causing them to spend more as well. The same effects also operate in reverse. Knowing the potential adverse impact of shutdown on people's income, the U.S. Congress passed $2.2 trillion in coronavirus aid, relief, an Economic Security Act, also known as the CARES Act in March 2020. The CARES Act is the biggest financial, um, biggest fiscal stimulus package in modern American history, providing monetary stimulus of about 10% of the GDP. Again, the aim was to provide economic relief to consumers, businesses, and state and local governments affected by the economic shutdown, while also allocating funds to help to contain the COVID-19 virus. 
In general, uh, fiscal policy interventions to keep businesses and cons consumers afloat don't come without consequences. During recessions, tax revenues um, goes down due to lower economic activity and government spending goes up due to efforts to put the economy back on track. Uh, as a result, uh, we see an upward pressure on the budget deficit. As I mentioned before, government spending was increasing even before the COVID-19 crisis. It is expected to further increase due to the fiscal policies adopted to fix pandemic-related problems. In early March, uh, economists project that federal spending will outpace revenues by about one trillion this year one trillion dollar this year. The total budget deficit currently represents about 20 percent of the GDP in the United States. In contrast, the deficit stayed around 10 percent of the GDP during the Great Recession. While the U.S. budget deficit seems to get higher over time and sounds alarming, when we compare the U.S. government debt as a share of the GDP to other countries, we see um, the U.S. is somewhat less exposed to debt. Um, considering that other countries have passed uh, similar fiscal spending efforts in response to the COVID-19 crisis. Increased budget deficit among um, developed countries is not surprising. The general consensus among economists is that the debt isn't an issue at this point, although that could change depending how long it takes to contain the virus. The frequent question I get during this pandemic is how will the government finance the stimulus package? Uh, one important point to know here is that governments do not have to print money all the time to finance their government spending. The United States government raises financial cap uh, capital by borrow borrowing from investors through the sale of U.S. government bonds. Uh, the U.S. Uh, Treasury offers multiple types of government bonds with different maturities. When investors purchase these securities, they expect a fixed uh, rate of interest every six months until the bond matures. Investors also know that treasury bonds are low risk, so the government raises capital while investors feel confident in their investments. Um, as I mentioned before, monetary policy refers to the Federal Reserve's actions to change interest rates to keep the economy and financial markets running smoothly. The Federal Reserve uses the interest rates to give consumers and businesses economic incentives to influence their saving and spending behavior. This in turn affects the GDP, unemployment rate, and inflation rate. For instance, uh, lower interest rates give incentives to consumers and businesses to borrow more and spend more. Federal Reserve achieves lower interest rates by increasing the money supply in the economy. If there is a large amount of money circulating in the system, people don't have to compete as hard for the money, which in turn reduces interest rates. Knowing this principle, the uh, when Federal Reserve wants to lower interest rates, it simply injects more money to the system. In response to the COVID-19, the Fed has immediately cut, uh, cut its target for interest rates by a total of 1.5 percentage points, bringing it down to a range of 0% to 0.25%. The Federal Reserve has, has its own policy tools to increase the money supply. These tools are many and complicated, but one tool is conducting open market operations, which is buying and selling U.S. government bonds. 
when the Federal Reserve buys U.S. government bonds from banks, it adds more money to the bank reserves. When banks have more money in their reserves, they are more likely to lend these reserves to consumers and businesses, which in turn increases the money supply in the economy and lowers the interest rates. There are other tools that the Federal Reserve uses to increase the money supply. These include um, setting expectations for future interest rates with forward guidance and buying mortgage-backed securities in addition to the government bonds with quantitative easing. All of these efforts are aimed at increasing the amount of money in the economy and help the economy get back on track after the COVID-19 crisis. Although the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has created a recession in the United States, policymakers have taken immediate measures to reduce the economic impact of the crisis through a variety of fiscal and monetary policies. The aim is to support the US economy in the short term so that we don't have to experience a prolonged recession. Although there's a danger that if the crisis continues, the um, economy will suffer additional setbacks. By taking these steps, policymakers hope to reduce the extent of future damage. Well, um, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, please contact me if you have questions or would like additional information about this presentation. Please, uh, please see the final slide uh, for a list of references used in this presentation and um, have a wonderful day.